Hey y'all. Hey. Um, we are back for another review of Sisters on BET. We are on episode nine. Episode nine, season two. Um, it's a little bit dark in here because I'm trying to minimize the light that's coming back from my glasses because I'm blind as a bat and I can't see so I need my glasses. But I'm trying to make it better for y'all to see me. So it's going to be a little dark until I figure out the situation on time move. Whichever comes first. All right, let's not end of there. We're back and we are in episode 19 of season two, as I've already said. All right, so Andy is talking to Gary in the parking garage and Gary is showing his ass. Gary is giving real vibrato. He's giving real, I'll smack a bitch. He's giving, I want my money back or I'm gonna choke the fuck out you vibes, okay? So, he's talking to Andy, and he's like, okay, I'm either basically either going to get in this car and go with me and talk to me, or I'm going to embarrass you in this parking lot, and you know you just got your job back, so I'm about to blow up your spot, right? So, they're talking, he's trying to make her get in the car, and he's so worried about who, what dude she was talking to and who she was talking to at the club, whether the guy that dropped you off, which was Paris. Yes, it was Paris, but that's not your business, okay? Um, And she's trying to walk away, he grabs her arm and her keys. Strike one, and strike motherfucking two. Grabs her arm and no, grabs her arm and snatches the keys out of her hand. When I told you I would have uppercut his nuts back into his body, if if it were me, but it ain't me. So, as I was saying, um, and he snatches the keys from her and he expresses the fact that he gave up everything to be with her and he's he's very irate about it and she's you know saying like I didn't ask you to do that that was a that was something you did on your own and in this moment Hayden. Hayden walks up and he sees what's what's happening. Well, he's kind of, you know, de de deducing what's going on in the situation. And he's asking Andy, like, you okay? You good? What's up? I didn't do anything. And she, Andy, fucking Andy, fucking Andy made me so mad sometimes. Andy tells Hayden, oh, yeah, I'm good. We're okay. That, that's nothing to see here. We're just talking. No, 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 no. Had a dude grabbed my arm and snatched my keys out of my hand, and another man was there to intervene in the situation. No, I wouldn't have made him duke it out, but I would have said, no, um, I need you to escort me to my car because I'm not interested in speaking to this person. I would have defused the situation by that means. Yeah, I wouldn't have said, oh, no, we good. No, sis, you're not good. You're finna get beat the fuck up. You're not good. But, um, anyway, she, she just acted like a damn fool still inundated with with what in the hell Gary is concerned about. So um she claims she's fine and, and, and Gary's talking to Hayden like you can get out of here. We're good, blah 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 blah. And Hayden walks away. He leaves. Now, if I was a man again in that situation, me, just me, not you, me. I wouldn't have been I wouldn't have been, been able to rest in the fact that I walked away. I, I couldn't have walked away. I, I had to have stayed there until I known that she was out of that situation just because just because of what I walked into. However, I have walked into those situations before, and at the end of it all, the woman still ends up leaving with the man, even though she got her head bammed into the car. But that's not here nor there. I'm just saying. Just, 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 just saying. Um... Anyway, so he gives her her keys and she gets in her car, but he tells her, you know, if you don't want to talk to me now, I'm going to follow you to wherever you're going. And so Andy's got in her car and she's trying to leave and Gary's trying to follow her, but Hayden blocked his car in and he's on the phone. We, we thought Hayden had left, but he got in his car and he blocked Gary's car in, I guess, long enough for Andy to get at a reasonable distance away from him. So that was... Round of applause. That was that was a, another way to intervene in the situation. Don't don't be a bystander all the time. You know you know picking nuts up and do something. So uh, I appreciated Hayden for just that little bit of that little bit of aid that he was able to aid Andy in. Though I have a sneaky suspicion that that is not Andy's last run in with Gary. Just just by nature of how this shit goes, it ain't gonna be her last time. But yeah. All right. So um. Andy calls Karen while she's on the road and she's, you know, kind of upset about it. She wants to talk to her girl. And, um, and Karen's like, okay, cool. I'm going to meet you at the house. Don't even worry about the say list. Exactly, Karen. If you come, if you're going to follow you, he's going to follow, he's going to meet me at the house when you get there. God damn it. You ain't going to be by yourself because you ain't got enough strength to, to, to beat his ass. I, I got it. I got enough ass whooping in me for you and him. Um, so Karen, I appreciate you for that. Um, Blah, 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 whatever, whatever. And so she asks 
Karen asked Andy, hey, does he have a key to your place? And Andy said no. But if I can recall when Andy so called, when uh, Gary so called left Jasmine, didn't he have a key? Because then when he making dinner and all this, if I'm remembering correctly from last season, Gary actually does have a key because he was moving in at one point. And then when Andy got upset, she told him to get his shit and move out. Am I mistaken? Because I feel like Gary does have a key. So why would you lie to Karen? Why are you still lying to people that's trying to help you? You told Hank you was fine. You're not fine. You told Karen he ain't got no key, but he do got a key. Girl, or do you want to be on First 48? That's, that's just my question to you. Do you? Okay, cool. All right. So, moving on. Um, Sabrina calls Danny to chat, and Danny tells Sabrina that, tell, tells Sabrina everything that went down with the uh, bartender dude. And Sabrina tells her about Calvin's desire to commit, to be exclusive. And um, we all know Danny don't want to hear because she can't let the whole crystal meth accusation go away. So she don't want to hear nothing about exclusivity when it comes to Calvin with a potential meth head at this point. A presumed meth head at this point. All right. So Sabrina, you know, gets this, this idea sparked in her head. So she hangs up with Danny and she calls Maurice. And she asks Maurice to take a drug test from the job and ask Calvin to take it since they're going to potentially be roommates under the guise of, I don't want to be with no meth head. I don't want to have no druggie as a roommate in order to get the results to Sabrina. Instead of Sabrina, again, just asking Calvin, is you, is you on that shit or what? Like, <laughs> is you on the shit or what? I mean, this is either the answer is yes or no. Whether it's a true, a truth or a lie, the answer is only going to be yes or no. That's the worst that can happen. So girl, ask the man if he's doing drugs if he is, move on. If he ain't, stay. Y'all wear the same penny drawers or whatever y'all gonna be doing. And shut up. Ugh. Moving on. All right, so. Fatima's was talking to Zach. And she, it got weird. It got weird right here. Because Fatima was talking to Zach. And he, she tells Zach, you know, the key is under the mat. The key is under the plant. Wherever the key is, the key will be there when you get there tonight. And he's trying to rush off the phone like, oh, okay, bro, I'm at the court. Basically trying to act like he's not talking to him on the phone. You know, trying to play it down to his coworkers. But earlier, they were already, like, low-key flirting when they were face-to-face. -face. So I'm so confused. Why are you trying to play it to the left now that you're on the phone with her? I don't get it. I don't understand. But maybe later on in this episode, I'm kind of putting together maybe it does make sense. Like, he was trying to play it to the left because there was conversation of her previously um talking to Hayden so maybe he's just just playing for Tima to the left but I didn't get that he knew that information at this point in the episode so all right so moving right along Andy gets home and Karen is already there like sis is already in the apartment like all right so what's up what's good what are we finna do um and Karen tells her that something just ain't really right about Gary. Like, there's a, there's a lot that's going on. And again, <laughs> again, Andy and his champion, she's championing, championing? What's the word? She's standing up for Gary, saying, oh, you know, he's just gotten out of jail. He has a lot going on. And she insists that Gary's fine. He's just upset. And Karen tells her, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, something is just off about him. And Andy is just adamant about the fact, well, you know, making excuses for this man that was about to bam your head, about to knock your head between the front door and the back door. I don't get it. But... I'm going to just drink some wine because it's girl. All right, so Andy's still going to stand up for Gary until she get slapped us out of here. Got it. All right. Um, well, Karen says, hey, you know, I got an idea. Let's, let's coordinate this thing that way. If he really wants his money back and we want to wash our hands of the situation, give me the money and tell him to contact me and I'll give him the money. And we'll do it that way. So he doesn't have to see you. You don't have to be afraid. We can, we can go ahead and squash this beef, whatever it is. And, you know, Andy's like, no, it's not that deep. You, you put 20 on 10 like you're doing a lot. That again, still standing up for Gary, girl. She's giving you offered you a way out. Hayden has offered you a way out. Karen has offered you a way out. Two ways out. And you still think Gary got your best interest at heart, sis? Is, is that what I'm getting? No, ma'am. All right. Whatever. Whatever, Andy. All right. So they they're both talking and they both end up that they they both end up admitting that um Andy's still in love with Gary. 
and Karen's still in love with Zach, and but Karen says, well, you know, even though I'm still in love with him, it's in my best interest, it's in what's best for me in order to let the situation go. We gotta be done, we gotta let it go. Now, y'all done made this pack 17 times in the last 17 episodes, but okay. Sure, that's just, maybe, maybe, we'll see how that goes. Um, and Andy tells Karen that she's, she's not as strong as she is, and her issue is that she can't, she can't wash her hands. She can't leave scot-free when it comes to matters of the heart. So in that moment, I deduce that, that that's it. That's Andy's issue. She can never walk away clean. Got it. I get it because I know someone personally that has the same issue. They can't walk away scot-free. I know a couple people like that. They, they, It doesn't matter how bad you treat them, what you do to them, what you've stolen from them, how you treated them, they will still think that there's some good in you. There's still some hope. There's still a friendship there. Granted, that's applicable to anybody. Hell, Hitler had personable qualities. But that does not mean that everybody is good for your spirit, baby. It's okay to walk away. You cannot be in contact with every ex you've ever had in your life and think they're still going to be your best friends. You can't be in contact with friends from 30 years ago that stole your, stole your bubble gum in middle school and you still won't be friends. So Andy's issue is she, she, when it comes to matters of the heart and matters of affection, she cannot walk away scot-free. So she, she's eternally tied to people because she can't just give up on people. Girl, that's a heavy existence. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have that problem. Cutting people off is as easy as giving me the scissors, the block button, the deletion button, the be quiet button. I don't pretty much give a damn. But, um, yeah, so she, 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 she kind of just gave us like an overall glimpse of how Andy tiptoes around her relationships in life. She can't, no matter what's done to her, she cannot walk away. Basically, that's what I got from from that statement. If if you found something different, let me know in the comments. But um, that's that's what I got from it. She she she's not strong enough to cut people off. Basically, girl, I'll be your friend. I cut them off for you. Anyway, all right. So Hayden drops by, pops by unannounced at Fatima's, and she's getting dressed because she has to go to the girls' night with, with Andy and, and the other girls. And she tells him, her say what you got to say. I got to go. I ain't got time. What's up? What you, what you want to do? She got a date. She ain't she, she concerned what he got to say at this point because why is you popping up unannounced? It's what I need to know. Um, And he's more concerned with who she's going out with, why she's dressed so cute, who he is, what he do for, like, just asking questions that you have no business asking me. Um, church go up church we go to the same church that's about it well he's he's concerned because he's concerned because he is in love with Fatima and Fatima's confused because why are you in love when we only knock each other off once and we go to church and our mamas are friends what in love the fuck so um he he tells her what happened with Gary um, and that she needs to talk to Andy, and she tells Hayden that, you know, there's, there's, and tells Hayden, tells Fatima she needs to talk to Andy, she's like, okay, I'll talk to him, all right, cool, bye, and she, he goes up to tell Fatima, you know, I'm in love with you, and she tells him, you know, how, after one, one interaction, and Fatima is not interested at all, she's like, okay, all right, it was fun, but, no, nah, I'm good, bro, and, um, Hayden, who has been, He's been up there with Fatima this season. Like, he's been rooting for Hayden, too, because he's been looking out for Andy. But he goes to tell Fatima um, that women her age are typically looking for marriage in a family, basically telling her that she, she's getting old. She needs to hurry and settle down. This is what she needs to be go, going for in life as far as the goal, and he's the man to help her with that. Strike one. He also claims he... Once she denied his advances, he understands what her problem is now. Her dad must have done something terribly awful to her mom, which makes her ter terribly awful to men. Strike two. Then he goes on to claim 
that he wants to marry her. After insults one and two. Strike three. And also tells her that she's going to look back on her life and see that she missed out on something amazing. I guess presumably him. As if he's some sort of prize that she should catch before the offer no longer stands. Strike four. And at that point, Fatima had realized, you know, the, 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 the BS that had come out of his mouth on four separate occasions within four minutes. And she ushers his right on out the door. And he wants to stick around and meet Zach, wants to see who this guy is. She's like, yeah, you can meet him. On the outside the door, you can meet him on his way in, but he, you can get out. So she put his ass right out, which for him, I'd have did the same thing. I probably would have smacked his ass on the way out because, what? Don't clock my age. Don't clock my goals. Don't tell me what I should be doing. Um, And then offer a marriage proposal at the end. That, fuck, that was fucking weird, honestly. Um, Moving on. All right. So Cowboy is at Danny's, and he's out, he's standing outside for once, because the landlady won't oblige him and let him in anymore, all right, boundaries, cool, like it, um, and she invites him in, and he apologizes and said his sister was the one to help him see how offensive Gal is, and he explains that it, that, that, that it wasn't intentional offense, what it was is, it was more cultural than, 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 than racial, I got it, I get it, I'm from deep down south, and you know I didn't be called a gal or two in my life by um by a Caucasian man, and I, I haven't been offended. It's intense. It's it's intent. It's undertone. It's is it's a lot of things to come with it. Now you know, gal isn't automatically racist. Racial undertones, absolutely not racist. Racism has to have a, a some intent behind it, in my opinion. I don't think he had that intent. I just think he's a cowboy. He's country. He don't know no better. However, at some point, you're you going to have to educate yourself. Can't be with no black lady and not know, you know, take a history, le a history lesson or 17. So he apologized. They make up. And now he wants to know about the bartender. And he wants to know if they slept together. And he also wants to know if she makes it a habit of, you know, sleeping with pe a lot of people, picking up people, and that type of thing, which... Valid question. I mean, if you y'all have made up and y'all want to move on to the next level, we're getting to know each other. It's a question that you want to ask for your own sanity. Got it? Good. All right. Um, and she admits that she just wanted to feel wanted because she didn't feel wanted after everything that they had going on with their little spat. Whoop de whoop, whatnot. All right. And he's gonna make us some, some dessert while she's out with the girls, and he'd be there when she get back, basically. All right. Calvin calls Maurice, and there he's going to come to the bank, and they're going to discuss, finalize the whether it's a yay or nay on the living arrangements. We'll come back. All right, so the preacher dude stops by Karen's, Aaron, stops by Karen's, and she asks if he knows the first lady that came by earlier, gives the lady's name, I don't remember, and he said no. And then he goes on to say what Pam said, like maybe the Lord is trying to tell her something, blah, 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 da, da, da. And tells him that it would be great if they, and she tells him that it would be great if he was there when she got back. He says, okay, cool. No problem at all. I'll go give me some clothes and I'll be here when you get back. Awesome. Everybody got a man at home. All right, Shante. All right. Um, then he asks her something that perturbed her in his spirit. Because he asked her, you know, do you need, do you need money to go out while you're hanging out with your girls? And she's looking like, boy, I got money. Don't, don't ask me if I got money. Basically, like, you know, trying to play it down. <sighs> so, we all know that Zach has never had no money, and Zach has never been in a position, or hell, yeah, probably anybody she's talked to at this point, has been in a position to offer her, offer her any sense of comfortability. So, she found it weird that he would ask her, you know, if she needed some little pocket change while she went out with her girls. And, well, I don't really need it, but I'll take it. I'll take 50 to 100. You know, that would have been my response. But, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, so that was interesting just to just kind of see her her reaction just for him offering. All right, Calvin shows up at the bank to talk to Maurice about the living arrangements, and he seems to be in a rush to get moved in. He's like, "Okay, wait, am I moving in? What's up? What's up? What's up?" And he's he's giving his dad that's not deceased all of his savings to help take care of him because his dad is moving to Florida. And Mars ends up, you know, having a soft spot for the fact that Mars is, I mean, 
Calvin is willing to give his whole life savings to his dad um, to help him move and to help him live comfortably. I don't know if I agree. I'm sorry. I don't know if I agree with giving my whole life savings away to my parents. I'm going to give you about half, but I ain't going to give all to you. And I'm going to tell you why. From a financial perspective, it was not wise to give them your complete savings because, because now you have no place to stay. You, your cup is empty. You cannot give nothing to anybody and your cup is empty. He has nothing for himself because he's giving it all away. I got it. Dad, you, you, you're old. Your partner's gone. You're about to move to Florida. You got a lot going on. How about this? I'm going to keep the money, you can live with me, and now I'll make a way. Because I'm younger, I'm more able-bodied to bring you some money, you're older, you ain't got to work. I would have much rather did that than to give you my life savings. That's just my little financial opinion on that, but what's done is done. Alright, so, Maurice agrees to let him move in, but he also tells him, alright, before we do this, go ahead and pee in this cup right here, go ahead and pee in the cup. So, Maurice asked him to pee in the cup. Now, Calvin is pissing in the cup in the middle of a bank. You know, this is just the shenanigans that come with Maurice. And, um, C Calvin is, he, he's comfortable in the fact that it should come back clean. So, maybe it was just a rumor. I don't know why anybody would want to lie on Calvin. Not saying that they didn't lie, but I don't see the premise. Of what was the game online saying this man doing crystal meth? But, Calvin is very... He's very confident in the fact that it's going to come back clean. So, we'll figure out next week what's, what's going on. What's going on is if it's dirty or clean at this point. All right. So, rounding out episode nine, Zach shows up to Fatima's and he seems a bit insecure in the fact that other men um, may want her because she's a good catch. She has her own money. She takes care of herself. She takes care of herself. Like, she, she's, a, she's a good catch. And he wants to know why she wants him, basically. Like, why why you want me? You can do whatever you want to do, be whatever you want to. And she basically said, because it's, it's basically, I want you to, to knock me down like you did the night before. But I also see something in you that I'm willing to nourish, willing to pour into. Um, and he sees it more as buttering him up as opposed to building him up. Um, and again, that comes from being jaded from Karen. You know, there wasn't much building. There was a whole lot of cutting down and, you know, belittling and that type of thing. So, um, he also goes on to ask her, you know, do you do this to all the men in the, in the group? And she was like, no, I never talked to anybody out that real estate group. Like, boy, please. Now, um, he also goes on to ask about Hayden. So, at some point between them flirting at the job site and him getting home that night, somebody had told him about Hayden and Fatima hooking up. And she tells him the truth about Hayden. Wasn't no lie, wasn't no him and her, wasn't no, I don't know what you're talking about. It was, she gave him the straight facts. Um, she, and she tells him, basically, at this point, like, okay, that was a one-time situation. Really, nothing much came of it. You can take it or leave it. It is what it is. And, um... She tells him, you know, whatever your issues is on the inside, you need to work them out. I'm here. I you here because I want you to be here. I could be dating anybody else. I could be dating everybody else. That is my decision as a grown, a grown ass woman. And that is what I would do if I wanted to do that. I have made a decision. Now you have to make a decision. Do you want to be here or do you not? And she left his ass standing right there and, and he was just, you know, I guess he's just kind of used to going back and forth. She said what she said, and she walked away. So, um, he's just standing there looking, looking dumb in the face. <laughs> he's like, oh, okay, so what I do with this information? So, he'll figure it out, yeah. Um, and then to wrap up this episode in a nice little bow or whatever, Maurice is leaving the bank, and Alonzo steps out of his car and end of the scene. So we'll see what develops with the Alonzo and Maurice situation. Hopefully he's there to make amends because it ain't going to be no round two of you, you know, monkey stumping me in, into the ICU. <laughs> it just couldn't happen. You might have got, got that first one off, baby, but that second one, I'd have to let your ass up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> you feel me? Anyway, that <laughs> is it for episode nine of Sisters. Episode 9 of Season 2 of Sisters on BET. Um, like, comment, share, subscribe, whatever you feel like doing. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.